right. All right. Go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. It is Saturday, I think, at Dragon Con. Woo! Yay! Woo! We survived the parade. Yeah. Um. So. You well, played Frogger. <laughs> I think I was the frog. Yeah. Uh, welcome to social media marketing for creators, authors, artists, and other entrepreneurs. I have a note here to remind the audience to rate your panel on the DragonCon app, so I am remembering to do that before I forget. And uh, so welcome, glad you're here. Let's let our wonderful panelists introduce themselves, starting with Jim. You said wonderful. Why'd you start with him? Oh, never mind. Yeah, Play no job. kidding. I mean, you, know. This, you, you, you start with the, the smart ass. And, oh, wait, never mind. Um, I'm Jim Nettles. I do a whole bunch of stuff, um, and I'll be in here pretty much all day. Um, but for this, I write science fiction, urban fantasy, a bit of horror, this, that, and the other. I write a bunch of nonfiction, entrepreneurship, social media, da 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 um, I own a company. We do some promotional stuff right now. We've, uh, I'm also one of the partners and founders in an AI company where we're doing a lot of marketing stuff, uh, gaming, a whole bunch of other things. Uh, with Gail, we run the continual online convention, and we have swag. Ooh. Great. I'm Gail Z. Martin and Morgan Bryce. As Gail, I write epic and urban fantasy, some steampunk, some near future post apocalyptic. As Morgan, I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal romance. I'm also the founder and co con runner with Jim and several other folks of Continual, the online, ongoing, multi genre convention that never ends, where we cover all kinds of stuff like this and many other genres. Uh, in real life for 20 years, um, I have my MBA in marketing and management information systems, and I ran marketing departments and uh, created websites and set up social media presence for companies, for nonprofits, and then later on for myself. I still do quite a bit hands-on with social media for my own books, and uh, that's probably why I'm here. Excellent, excellent. Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew Greenberg. I got into game development uh, back in 1990, doing a original developer of a tabletop game called Vampire the Masquerade, when our social media tools were AOL and BBSs. So it's progressed a little bit since then. I have my own game company, Holistic Design Incorporated. We coordinate with our publishers and distributors to do social marketing for our tabletop Fading Suns and our Empathy Fading Suns computer game and other computer games. In addition, I'm the executive director of the Georgia Game Developers Association, so I've been running that social media for more than a decade. Uh, I've worked with companies that have been involved in social media, like some virtual worlds and the like, that structured themselves as social media hubs and have been advising companies within the GGDA on social media and more and so on. All right, so just to kind of get a feel for who's out there, who you guys are, and so we know how to kind of tailor what you what to tell you, uh, so it's stuff you want to hear. How many folks out there are authors or want to be authors? Come on, raise my high. Okay, good, good. How many folks are artists or game designers? Okay, and how many folks are entrepreneurs that don't fall in either of those? Okay, gives us an idea of, of what the ratio there is. <clears throat> All right, so if somebody is staring like a deer in the headlights at the idea of doing social media for their project, whatever that project is, what would you tell them, what would be the first two things you would tell them to get them headed um, down the right direction, even if it's not their ultimate path? Jim? Um, probably the top two things I'm going to say right now in the current environment we're in are number one, get your branding right. Go ahead and figure out what your messaging is and get your branding right and go ahead and build your the social media presence around it for that. And number two, expect to spend some money. Um, especially in the current media work medium we're in, um, you're gonna be pay for play at this point. I would add to that, I think Jim's totally right, and I would add to that, figure out where your audience is. You don't want to spend time and money and effort building a presence on a platform where your audience isn't already standing. It is much easier to find and find your audience where they are than try to convince them to come over to a platform where they aren't. Uh, you only have so much time, effort, and money. Go where they are and make a noise where they already are. And the second thing to that is to make sure you 
really know who your audience is. Many times people spend a lot of effort chasing an audience only to find out that's not really who's most likely to buy their product, whether that's a book or a game or art. So do some research to make sure you understand who your buyers actually are and then go find them. That's great. And uh, for people who are completely deer in the headlights, not sure where to start, my two pieces of, uh, of advice would be one, chat GPT. Seriously. And that's not just a plug for our later panel at Sunday at 8.30 on using LLMs and generative AIs for gaming creative works. Uh, seriously, type in how should I structure a social media campaign for X and then refine it down as it fits more and more what you're actually doing. Get that as your starting place. Get those ideas down. And then you can use that to make something that actually works. But it'll actually spit out a lot of ideas in a structured way that you can follow. You can have it give you the whole roadmap. How should I do this if I'm just starting out? It's what they're going to spit out, even if you're going with ChatGPT4, isn't your final answer. But if you don't know anything, definitely start there and take some notes. And even if you've done it before, you'll get a couple ideas that you haven't looked at before. And that part's still free. So jump on it. The second thing is uh, we talk about audience, community. That is king your community is what will determine your success these days i think even more than our talent and wonderfulness as creators and this is definitely been true in my career i've got games that have been out since the 90s that are still selling today and they're selling because of that dedicated long-term community people who love it people who care for us and who i love interacting with and as you're doing social media Try to avoid that whole broadcasting idea. I'm telling you what's out there. And think of it as how do I build a community that will last with me. And I think a uh, caveat to that chat GPT, wonderful as it is, realize that it does sometimes smoke um, <laughs> illegal substances and hallucinate. So you can't take everything yep. that it says as, you know, golden. Validate. Get use it as a brainstorming tool, but then you still have to validate and dig deeper because it's not always perfect. Yep, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and if you want to hear some of the more fun stuff that goes along with that and caveats, come see me at five thirty where we're talking about copyrights and AI. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, um, what do you think is what do you think are the two biggest mistakes people make when they are first starting out? So the the first thing is this, and I think it builds on one of the most important parts. The platforms we're talking about here are called social media, <laughs> not social media. It, one of the first big mistakes everybody makes is they don't know why they're there. They just think that they're trying to go find buyers, readers, fans, customers, whatever else. If you're going to be on the platforms, one of the first big mistakes is not recognizing that it's going to be take time. It's going to take resources to build an effective community. And it's one of those things of, well, I joined Twitter and I've got three followers and why is this not like making me millions? Social media is a long-term game and one that you have to work, manage, and feed continuously. Yeah, and I think, I think the piece of being social there is something you have to reckon with up front and figure out how much you can give because we all have limited bandwidth. We hopefully have other things in our lives as well, whether those are partners or kids or dogs or, uh, you know, sleep, sleep is that that elusive thing you might have heard about. And so you and also there is the creating thing. If you're on social media all the time, you aren't creating. If you're creating all the time, you're not telling people about it so they can buy it. Um, figure out how much time and how much of yourself you can give this. You're not going to be able to be equally social on all of the platforms. So pick the ones that you enjoy being on the most to be present and social. And at least for starters, think of the others as broadcast mediums that you can always jump into in a more fully realized way to be more social once you've got some people listening and you've got some stuff out there. But uh, from the get-go, don't try to be everywhere, everything all at once. Yeah, Gail's suggestions are great. I mean, don't spread yourself too thin and remember that it is social and you are being social, you're not just broadcasting. Uh, I would go ahead and add to that uh, 
two more caveats uh, to remember. One is that there's a whole lot of different types of social media, and you can find what you're most comfortable with. I know people use Roblox as their social media, and it's very effective for them, and they like being in Roblox, and their community likes being in Roblox. So build in there. It's especially true for game dev folks. Uh, I've got some game devs who their social media really is their Twitch channel, and dedicated folks come to watch them develop games and talk about it, and those folks who talk about it are the evangelists who push their games from then on. And they like doing their Twitch stream. And they don't want to be trying to remember to do uh, Blue Sky every uh, every hour or so. So they go with they go with that. The second thing to remember is that these things change over. And uh, we're not on MySpace. That's the great obvious example. But last year, I mean, my George Game Developers Association, we've got well over 2,000 followers. It's not huge, but we would get 40% engagement on anything I tweeted out. Now it's seriously negligible. I mean, it's the same audience size. It's almost nobody. I've got a much smaller audience on Blue Sky, but much better engagement in, in actual physical numbers, not just as a percentage. So you've got to keep an eye on what is performing for you and what isn't. Yeah, very and well said. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to add something to that. So this goes back to that chat GPT thing. Um, one of the things that we have seen a lot of development, especially in the last number of months, is that these platforms actually are getting much better at recognizing what is basically AI-generated crap <laughs> and filtering it out um, because it's flooding not only the book markets, it's al also flooding social media. Stuff that, we, that they used to pay half to pay bots for that would take dozens or hundreds of people running on a bunch of devices and bots and things like this. Now you can crank out actually higher quality writing because let's be honest, when they sent you that email that said, if you don't send me a $50 gift certificate to Amazon, I'm going to turn you into the IRS. Um, you know, they, at least the grammar is now relatively correct. <laughs> um, so when you look, the systems are getting much smarter about filtering it because larger platforms as well as ones such as the toxic talk with <laughs> levels of the algorithms and intelligence is getting much smarter. And one of the things that, that the Zuck came out and said a num, you know, about a year, year and a half ago was, we want to see social engagement again. We don't want all the shit posting and memes. We want real social engagement, which means running a business side of it, it's either pay for play or a lot of work yeah. to manage that community. Yep. Yeah, I like toxic toxic talk. I also like X I T T E R, which could be pronounced <laughs> shitter, uh, or or however you want to make that. Yep. Um, how many platforms should someone realistically consider being on, uh, given all the limitations we've we've talked about of time, sleep, that that kind of thing, Jim? <clears throat> I always recommend start with two, the one that you like and mm -hmm. you're comfortable on, and the one where you know your people are at. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook is still a strong anchor depending on what you know your demographics are. If your customer base is 35 and under, no. The only real benefit to Facebook is the ability to run groups, media, things like that pretty effectively, which is one of the ways we built Continual. Mm -hmm. um, we have not spent money on it, really. Um, we It's been pure fan base and, and stuff to grow it. But Facebook is a good place because of the forums and the ability to create community that's really all it's really strong for if you are writing for communities that are 35 and 40 and up then it's still a very viable platform for now um, the platform that formerly was known as a big blue bird mm -hmm. is kind of recovering because it's still one of the primary platforms to reach people um, so that's still really your two major platforms um, but when you're talking Facebook, you got to decide, is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is, you know, which are you trying the new threads? You know, where are you at? The one thing I am going to mention it, about this is when you start stretching into other platforms, scheduling tools are very helpful. Mm -hmm. They allow you to do a lot more. They can also restrict how much stuff gets viewed because, again, the platforms want to see that real engagement. Yeah, um, I, I agree with what Jim said. You know, for me, I write epic and urban fantasy that tends to draw a somewhat older crowd, not, not teenagers, not tweens, uh, not 20s. So Facebook has worked out very well with that. With the romance, um, we do have a lot of readers who are 35 plus, but we also have a lot of readers and authors who are under that. So um, I split my time mostly between 
Facebook, where my presence is heaviest, I have a reader group for my epic fantasy, a reader group for my urban fantasy, a reader group because I'm an obsessed Supernatural fan. But you know what? That ties into my urban fantasy. We have continual, so I'm heavy on Facebook. But then I'm also on Instagram and TikTok, not because I particularly love hanging out there, but that's where I know the younger readers and um, the, the 20s, 30s um, are, as well as the other authors. And so that is viable for my romance brand. Um, I enjoy being on them. I just have a limited amount of time. And so that's where you have to start looking at the money piece to say, what can I afford? And what can, what can I buy with that money that is going to do what I can't or be where I can't? Yeah, yeah. And uh, great points all. The other thing to look at is what you're trying to do with each social media, because they all do different things. Well, for the George Game Developers Association and for my computer games, the best social media is my Discord. We got over 600 members in the GGA, we got hundreds in our gaming ones, and that's because our community is active. They work with us in a lot of things. One is a trade association, so the folks are doing different roles within the trade association. The other, we have got a lot of modders for our games who do their own versions of the games and want to do their own scenarios for the tabletop games, and they want to talk back and forth. So that Discord has become my starting place. Uh, all kinds of channels in there. People have the discussions they want, and they will definitely... Uh, uh, spread the am amplify the bandwidth, uh, amplify the sound of whatever I put out there. Second, a surprising social media tool is your newsletter, and I strongly recommend developing one of these. And Mailchimp, before it got bought into it, had implemented some very good tools so that you're not just broadcasting with your newsletter. My newsletter gets great engagement, very happy. Again, over several thousand folks, and the percentage on it on opening and clicks is, is beautiful. But what you can do is with those clicks is drive them into engagement so it becomes a conversation. This will get you into the Discord. This will get you to the YouTube channels and comment on these things, point them to specific things, and start the, the social uh, conversation. Facebook is good because we have people who are there, and once I post it on Discord, we'll then take it over to Facebook for the folks who don't want to be in the Discord. Uh, for whatever reason. And then you've got Blue Sky and Twitter for immediate things, things you want people to know right now because they will get that uh, earlier than others. I even keep a Tumblr for uh, folks who really like the art stuff. And so that's good to send out there. Um, we had a lot of, we talked about where the fans are. We knew we had a bunch in Reddit. I just didn't want to really be dealing with Reddit. So put all those folks into the Discord. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, um, I absolutely want to agree with the newsletter piece. Facebook, Twitter, all the rest of them, they're territory that you borrow, but they aren't territory that you own. Good your point. newsletter is the only thing Good you point. own. Uh, that and, and maybe your website to a point. But if Facebook goes away tomorrow, if uh, Twitter goes away tomorrow, um, so do all your contacts there. And you have no real way to recover those connections that you've built over years and, and maybe spent advertising money to collect. Your newsletter is your territory. That's your real estate. You own it. And so even though email newsletters may seem like a blast from the past, they are absolutely worth investing time and effort in building. And one of the things I do religiously is join newsletter builder promotions, which are great for authors to reach people in my niche who read my kind of stuff so that they sign up uh, for a chance to win something. They know they're signing up for my newsletter by asking for my freebie, and that's built my newsletters um, somewhere around 15,000 on each of them. Um, let me ask a question on yeah. it, if you don't mind, to the audience. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to know, how many of you have one or two newsletters you've signed up for when it hits your mailbox, you will open it? You know you'll get it. All right. Yeah. yeah. That, and the other thing about I want to add, with all of these sites, you know, you're talking about Discord and Facebook and all this, you can't set it and forget it or the trolls will take it over. <laughs> Someone <laughs> has to moderate this. Yep. So whether you have moderate content on so every, every comment has to be approved or whether you are in there for a certain amount of time every day, if you're not watching the dialogue, it will very quickly go to hell in a handbasket. So that is another piece of it, not just what content you're posting, but making sure everybody plays uh, nice and is civil and that you are, ha you are building the kind of community you want and that some asshole isn't hijacking it. And, and, and the only one other thing I want to add about the newsletters is this. You know, just asking the question, how many of you have the ones that you really want to open up? Remember, email is still something that we, we treat as very personal. 
right? We get a bunch of you know we get a bunch of spam, we get a bunch of stuff that we don't care about, we flag it everything else. But as creators, as business owners, as people that we want to engage with that newsletter, it's not just about having it; it's about giving something of yourself, something of value, and something that people want to see and connect with. As as writers, when we do stuff, it's not all about buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. There are some authors that do that very effectively, but generally readers are more like, what's happening to you? What's going on in life? You know, how's how's the work going? For continual stuff, what's you know what what shows have we done? You know, what conventions have we been to? What stuff do we talk about? Who we see? What pictures did we get? Pictures of your pets are something that you will never understand how much that moves because people <laughs> want your pet, your dogs, your cats. You want Facebook hamsters. engagement, put that pet pic in. You want that ferret, the lizard, you know, the, the, whatever it is. They want to see the pets because that's, that's something that's dear to you. And that way people get a much more of a view of who you are and who they're letting into their head. And it's not kidding. On Facebook, if my engagement numbers are going down and my personal stuff, I will post a pet pic and they'll go right back up for a while. It, yeah. it is freaky, but it's true. Uh, so, I'd so like to add on to what you were saying, mm -hmm. though, about the trolls and all that, because mm -hmm. you should raise a great point. And one thing to keep in mind is you will want a team. You shouldn't just be doing this yourself. I've got a friend right now who's building games that you play in Discord. They're not out yet. It's going to be fun. But he's already enlisted his daughters to help with the moderation and all that kind of stuff. Find those people early on you can trust who can help you across these, especially if they are dedicated to platforms. I said before, I don't like Reddit, but I have fans who love Reddit, and basically I don't mind if they essentially speak for me up there. They'll say, I don't know the answer to this, I'll find out, etc. But that's great. They feel more involved, it drives their passion, and it means that I can have a presence on a platform I don't want to spend much time on. Not to mention the fact that if you somehow in, end up in Facebook jail, which God <laughs> knows why, but you posted something four years ago and, and they finally found it, um, if you it have was other, that supernatural meme again of you. It, it was. It was, absolutely, I'm sure. Um, if you have other people who are also admins and mods, they can let you back in your own group. Uh, and they can, they can post and say, I'm sorry, Gail's in Facebook jail for two again. weeks. You know, again. Uh, so this is why you're not hearing from her, and then they can post for you. Um, so give us the top two things that you think are worth spending money on when it comes to building social media. This right now, is, and this is something that changes frequently. So that's one of the first challenges is, is where does money go and how do you do things effectively? Um, I think there is, there is value in spending money to build your community on the platforms, to boost posts, to do things like that, because they are now mostly a fair amount of pay for play. Especially if you're on Facebook, if you're on... Um, in that world there really is a lot of pay for play and there's some things to say hey my group exists come come join it um i think there is obviously value in running straight up ads for check out my products you know awareness and it, there's we could talk about a whole lot about how the ads and stuff work and, and where but one of the biggest things that i do encourage spending some money on and you can do it pretty effectively are the things that build people to your real estate. Come check out the website, get on the newsletter list. Here's a freebie. And why would I say spend money to give something away? Because I can either spend money one time for somebody maybe to come check out a book or, or buy a product, something like that. Or I can spend the money to get them on my newsletter list where if I'm doing the right thing and I'm engaging with people, I've spent the money one time to engage with them for forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, I, I do run Facebook ads, um, but I'm also constantly looking for ways to connect with people, to keep bringing them into my newsletter, mm -hmm. and I use programs like Book Funnel and Story Origin to do those. Uh, Prolific Works was the one that kind of pioneered it, but they have not bothered to build out their additional services. Book Funnel and Story Origin, especially for authors, have gone beyond the "Hey, here's my free story, sign up for my newsletter," to letting you, uh, to giving you secure ways to distribute advanced review copies, to find beta readers, to find ARC readers, to uh, build your own promotions, and do a lot more things. Um, I also work with several virtual assistants, and they help me expand what I can do. So I have, um, I have two people help, who help me with Twitter. Um, one, I supply 
uh, links to of all the places I've been in other media and say, hey, turn these into tweets, and then I've got somebody else who schedules and programs them. And then I chime in from time to time when conversations occur. I've got uh, somebody else who makes sure that I'm constantly in the book promotion Facebook groups. There are about, you know, 100 or so that are germane to what I do. She makes sure that I've got a constant presence there. Um, you know, I've, I've, I work with a few other folks for different niche things because that buys me back some time when I can actually write books. So, yeah, uh, it's an expense, whether you're paying for ads, you're paying for physical help, or you're... Uh, you're buying time. You're buying time. And the thing is, you've got to keep, you can't just promote, you've got to also create, and that becomes a real tension. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'll go in a completely different way with the two things uh, you should spend money on. One is equipment. Number one, a good one of these, because at some point you're going to be doing Zooms with folks, you're going to be on people's podcasts. If you don't have your own YouTube channel, Twitch channel, I recommend it. Uh, those are great for building your audience and for them communicating to you through comments for a long time to come. Get a good mic. Get a good camera. Get a good backdrop behind you. Uh, you might even want to upgrade your computer. If you're going to be a lot on a lot of these things, you might want to upgrade your phone and a better phone camera so you can be taking those better pet shots whenever. And this is an advantage. If you're buying this stuff for yourself, your own company, you can be using that for your pet shots. So, hey, go for it. Uh, this and it's a tax write-off. Yeah, make, make sure that the, your pet gets some of this. You know, make, <laughs> pay them in treats. Get the bark box. You know, help pay them for helping boost your brand. And the second one might sound counterintuitive, but in-person events. These are great ways to reward your online community. Come out to an event like this. Invite people to meet you somewhere. You're giving them stickers. You're giving them whatever. There is still, in my opinion... No better fan, evangelist, audience, community member than one who's met you in person, really connects, and now wants to talk about how much they love you and your work, not just what you've created. And those people, for me, have been not only great promoters, but become very good friends through the years. I love the folks I meet online, but that in-person connection is still great. I'm at, I'm at Dragon Con. Come out to these sessions and meet me and say hi. Invaluable, and if you can do a party or whatever, do it. Well, and realize that it doesn't have to be a large group. Don't mm -hmm. feel like you have to fill a ballroom. Ten people show up. Five people show up. Invest everything you've got in making those people feel welcome and part of the family because they're going to come away having had an almost one-on-one -on -one with you. And while you may not think that's anything special because I'm um, just me, my kids get one-on-one -on -one with me all the time. <laughs> Who wants that? This is, you know, you get one-on-one -on -one with maybe your favorite author or five-on-one -on -one or ten-on-one. -on -one. That's special. So you don't have to focus. Quantity's nice, but quantity also dilutes that, that personal connection. If you throw a, a get-together and ten people show up, give them everything you've got and build that community and they're going to go away going you know what i got a whole hour with this person they answered all my questions and they talked to me and and they're going to tell all their friends and now maybe that 10 becomes 20 or 50 or 100. i'll give a, a perfect example of that if you don't mind if you know jim moore a fantasy writer he used yeah. to be a regular presence here at this con before we moved up north uh but now he is a very well-selling author stuff's get placed on best sellers. before that he would sometimes just let people know he was hosting a table at the Hyatt and during Dragon Con. Fans of his work, there weren't a lot of them back then, would come up. And if he enjoyed the conversation, he'd buy him a drink. He'd take a look out of time. It's low, it something he'd be doing there anyway. And it just worked out really well. So, yeah, spend your money on rewarding those, uh, those live bodies. And, and then you also get super fans. There's nothing mm -hmm. better than the super fans. They become friends. They yep. become mm -hmm. people that you know well. Absolutely. And if you're lucky, you get denoed. Um, mm -hmm. And some of you guys might know that joke. But, I mean. I have the pin. Yes. <laughs> I don't have my Dino pin on me. And I'm, I'm horrible. Um, but it's one of those things of, about building actual relationships. Because, yes, it means you're giving something of yourself. But it also means that you're building valuable relationships with people that t are going to tell you, what do they want? What do they want to see? How can you reach them better? And they become better marketers than you will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I can go send all day, buy my stuff, it's great. Buy my stuff, it's great. But if somebody else comes and recommends it, whether it's another author that says, hey, you know, I love so and so stuff, you might like it too, that's a great recommendation. But somebody is just a big fan going and talking about it all day long, sharing pictures of the book, I got a picture with the author, I did this, mm -hmm. I did this, is great marketing. 
but it's also something that as a creator helps remind us why we do this right right mm-hmm. and i'd like to build on that exactly what you were saying about the becoming uh friends point if you've been in this industry long enough the people who have who you met because they enjoyed your stuff will become your friends and that is a great feeling uh, a great source of interaction and in my mind really the main reason we're doing this social media stuff in the first place yeah i mean i'm, I'm assuming that you're doing this because you love the, right. the concept you love the game you love the, the you love telling stories you love whatever it is that that you're doing why wouldn't you also then like people who like the same thing yeah at a certain point you look around you go all my friends are now <laughs> in the business or their readers or both right. and that's okay because right. it means we all love the same thing i used to no. joke that um that games were just be- were just spreadsheets and the more you hid the fact that your game was a spreadsheet the better it would do the better game it was now i say the best games are those that build the best communities this is very true the most successful games like fortnite all create these giant communities that passionate and i see this in books now as well the best uh, selling authors the ones who are building these dedicated communities we see here at dragon con yeah i mean i said i was an obsessed supernatural fan supernatural like many other things has a dedicated frothing at the mouth rabbit fandom to the <laughs> point where the fans showed up to help pick it on the uh, SGA line Yay. yesterday, the uh, day before yesterday was Supernatural Day, and the, the actors were there, Kripke was there, the fans were there. Um, these are people who watch Netflix, so be nice to my show. Um, <laughs> you, that, is, that has become a community of people. And yeah, there are the crazy cousins. But there, <laughs> there is also so much good and reinforcement and... Uh, friendships that come out of that so you know this becomes an enriching part of your life and and maybe that community is going to be around your game or your book for some people the most rewarding thing i can have i love it when people say oh i read your book and i really liked it what i really love is when someone says i was having a rotten year and your books got me through it i was sitting at a hospital bedside and the only reason i kept my sanity was i was reading your series i have been that person and so i am so thrilled to get a chance to pay that forward that's when you start really seeing the effects of, of community around what you build. Now, what are two things you would suggest people not spend money on? <laughs> um, Just limit it to two, Jim. <laughs> uh, 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 there are so all, many. Take all my fun away. <laughs> um, the first thing I would recommend you not go spend a bunch of money on is just dumping a bunch of money into ads without having done the groundwork and research because you will burn a ton of money very quickly with zero results. Um, you've got, I mean, it, you're going to have to spend the time up front. And so if you don't, you're just going to burn the cash, right? And if you don't know what the hell you're doing, and you probably don't, if you've not, if you've never done it, it's worth it to go spend five bucks a day or something to play with it, to learn some about it. But it can be definitely worthwhile to, to either pay somebody that really knows what they're doing or have somebody teach you the business and how the analytics work. Because it changes constantly right you you're learning more about how to learn how the system is working today and if you are a creator it's hell to keep up with how those things do i work in the business and it's hell mm-hmm. to keep up with what those things do that's why i have people um the second thing i would say it is not worth really spending a lot of money on unless you have a lot you want to burn is how you want to do product sample swag and give away um, because I've seen some people do some beautiful swag. Some of it is still on shelves at my house. Mm-hmm. Did not convert to a sale, but it's fun stuff. However, um, you know, postcards, bookmarks, things like that are very, uh, they're economical. They can reach people. They're not a high return item, but your ROI on the cost for the item puts something in somebody's hands. And if somebody comes to the table and says, or, you know, comes to see you and says, hey i can't buy a book i'm like great let me autograph something for you let me autograph a card something they can take away because putting an autograph on that card makes it way more valuable than just grab a card um so but the kinds of swag you do like i you know i do 3d printing we've got a bunch of friends that do 3d printing all sorts of swag and merch and stuff like that you can crank out and do some really fun swag that is unique to you but just be judicious about where you're spending that money. 
Yeah, I, I once again completely agree. Another use for that swag, if you're going to make something that's a little nicer than just a card, is as a reward for people who do interact with you. So I have the cards. They're the freebies I give away to everybody. But then I have the stickers. I have the pins. I have the coasters. I even printed, you know, the old-fashioned uh, motor court keychains with the diamond plastic key fob? Uh, I've printed those for two fictitious businesses in my books. Those are the upscale, that, that's the thank you for being a fan. Hey, um, here, here's something to say thank you for being an engaged fan. And there's, there's value in having that. Um, I would stay away from the boost this post thing in your groups uh, because what, in my experience, tell me if this has changed, once they know you'll pay for something, your organic engagement drops to zero. So you may not be getting fantastic organic engagement, but trust me, it'll get worse if they think you can pay for it to get better. Um, the other thing I'd caution... That I, first taste is free. Oh, yeah, always. Um, the other thing I'd caution on is vet who you ask for marketing help. That's why I use a number of different people for different pieces that they do very, very well. Um, there are people out there selling package deals. Make sure you understand how marketing works before you sign up with any of those because many of them are still working on an outdated model of how publicity works from, yeah, 20 years ago and you're not going to get your money's worth. It's better to find people who are experts in building mailing lists, experts in doing blog tours, experts in building uh, Instagram engagement than trying to go with one place to do everything and maybe they're not experts in all that. Really vet who you ask for help and the way you vet is you go around and you ask people, who are you using for this? What do you think of this? Did you ever use these people? And that means getting to know your fellow creators in a community of its own where you can talk shop with other people without it being competitive. And continuing on the vetting idea, uh, don't pay an influencer unless you know what they do and know that they fit you and the audience fits you, uh, especially in games. It's probably true elsewhere. Influencers reach out to indie game studios and say, hey, I'll feature your game if you give me X amount of money. And if you haven't, and for a game studio who's never been approached like this, it's very exciting. Oh my goodness, there's an influencer approaching me. But then you go look at the channel and it's nothing like what your game is. The audience is definitely not going to be yours. Don't bother paying for that. Find influencers you like and follow their recommendations. We had Tiger Lily uh, on the FF track last year. She's an excellent indie game. She mainly does the big games, but she also loves promoting indie games. And so she'll do them, and then she'll point you to other folks who'd be good ones for it. And she's been a great resource for the Game Developers Association. So make sure you vet them before you use them. The second one that we often see in game dev are people offering uh, or asking for money to pay for reviews. I think of Steam as a social media platform as well as a digital distribution tool because those forums are so active and such an important way for people to decide what they're going to buy. And if someone comes to you and says, hey, I'll give you a nice review if you pay me money, uh, people are going to click through that person and see what else they've done and decide they don't care about that person's review whatsoever. If you think they're going to give you a negative review, if they, if they, if you don't pay their extortion, go out to your community and say, hey, we got someone shaking us down. Please give us a bunch more rev honest reviews of what you think because your community is going to give you fives anyway uh, to get up there and weigh it out. Say, so, yeah, don't, don't pay that extortion and don't pay influences without knowing they fit you. Well, and, and I mentioned getting to know the other creators in your space, whether that's other authors, other game developers. Uh, you know, Rising Tide uh, boosts all boats. So when you start working together and start saying, I'll feature you in, in my newsletter, you feature me in your newsletter. Hey, I'll give you a shout out. Come over to my group and promote your new book. And then when my book comes out, I'll go to your group. That's free. That's building relationships. But you know what? If, if your readers are reading their books and you're, you show up in their group, there's likely to be a number of people who haven't found you yet who are going to say, oh, well, if, so, if, if author X let this person in the group and it's a similar book, I might like them too. And that doesn't cost you anything except the effort to get to know people and build mutually beneficial reciprocal relationships. And that's a, that's a great point because just like uh, book readers have hundreds of books in their libraries, gamers have, the average gamer has hundreds of games in their Steam account. We are not competing against each other. We are working with each other to create a better industry and a better fan experience. Well, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the one thing, here's something I would add to this. 
um, because I see it happen. It becomes that silo and that fear of talking about ideas, talking about things. Now, I mean, as writers, we share and talk about ideas all the time because we, we're like, how do I take something and hammer this into something workable? I got a problem I need to fix. There might be a reason I'm killed off by a number of my friends as authors. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, what happens is as you start building any kind of a business, right? Because, I mean, some of you guys in here are entrepreneurs in other spaces. One of the things is I'm in a bunch of different spaces and all over the place all over the time. And, you know, one of those things that happens when you're a writer, everybody all of a sudden you become knows is a writer or a reader or an editor or a publisher. And you're like, everybody, everybody I turn, every time I turn around, there's another writer, it, Yes, because you got in the community. I'm a game developer. I'm a gamer. I'm, I'm in this community. Everybody, well, everybody does this, right? I'm in technology. I'm in consulting. I'm in, a, I'm in a bunch of bubbles, but it's always fun to watch and see where people don't realize the bubble they're in. Most of those bubbles are actually quite small, and everyone talks, right? So we're going to go with the Will Wheaton rule. <laughs> as you're building your community support the people and build a healthy community around you and because all of you guys are going to be able to grow and develop and work together and make things happen because everybody has different skill sets everybody has different goals wants needs and different audiences if all of you are growing together and supporting each other you'll have a much better shot at success than no here is my silo mm -hmm. great stay in your silo I mean, that's really what we did with Continual. Uh, we're in our fourth year now. We've done close to 1,000 panels. We've had over 400 unique panelists from all over the world. 500. 500, are we up to that? Okay. Um, and we do, you know, five to seven at least unique panels post every week. Um, and that's in, that's in writing craft, um, sci-fi fantasy, romance, horror, uh, mystery, fandom, supernatural, which gets its own track because I love it. and um, addict. addict. Addict is the word you're looking for. Uh, fandom, geekery, and, and that's every week. Well, that, that means we get to play with all these people on an ongoing basis. We get to help boost their new releases. Uh, they come on our panels and talk about cool things. It's community. Mm -hmm. and, and that has been started during the pandemic, but it's, it continues to grow. Yeah to grow and it's because it's a form of community i want to throw this open to questions so who's got them? line up line up yeah, at the microphone the if you have a question and you can still rate this even before the questions yeah line up line up at the mic make us feel loved <laughs> great panel. Uh, thank you great topic thank you uh, i'm an author yeah. and basically i know social media is out there i'm on it to some extent but kind of in a very casual somewhat chaotic fashion yeah. it's, good, it's good to hear how to sort of coalesce that and I never thought about using ChatGBT on my side, not as a threat, but as a way of sort of organizing and thinking about that. But here's a, here's a specific question. So I am on Instagram. Honestly, you're right about it being a moving target. I mean, they all are. But Instagram recently seems to be uh, kind of like slotted, they're kind of monetized. I think their, their community's better. So if you don't have like a billion followers already, it seems like trying to tag your your with hashtags, your stuff has really become very hard to do. And now you're only limited to like sort of a few top postings of people you're trying to follow and stuff like that. So is is that still a good platform to use? Or I mean, if, if you guys maybe have 50,000 followers, this may be a non-issue for you, but if you have like 50 followers, how do you grow that? Um, you know, I'll take 50 of the right followers right. over 50,000 nameless people who just wandered in. Pet photos are a big thing. You really, really are. <laughs> Pet photos. Vacation photos. It doesn't just have to be, it doesn't just have to be your book. Um, there are also things, you know, I work with Authors XP a lot, uh, AuthorsXP.com, and one of their things is grow your followers. And they have... A uh, list of over a hundred thousand dedicated fans that they promote things to those people find your niche and they offer them incentives to you know hey enter for a chance to win by following these people on on Instagram following these people people on TikTok, and then once they're there and they get there and they if they like what they see they'll keep engaging one uh, 
Go ahead. No, go for it. <laughs> One thing I've noticed in the game space, uh, Instagram is big for game devs, but most of the game devs I know use it to drive their fans elsewhere, especially to their Discord. Uh, they don't find it a good way to go back and forth with the fans. They, they, many of them tell me it's still kind of like a broadcast medium mm-hmm. for them, and therefore just use it to get it some, somewhere else. So, and this is one of those things, again, we haven't touched on, is the idea that video and images are the key drivers, yeah. right? We want to see. We're very, we're both tactile, but we're also visual, audio, auditory. How many, how many of us all love to be on video and, you know, be all over the place all the time, show ourselves off, do those stylish pictures? Okay, we have a couple of people back there, <laughs> but the rest of you... Suck it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, pets. 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 Conventions. Make them earn Take key. pictures of this. Take pictures of your panel here. Tag mm-hmm. us all so we can reply to you. Mm-hmm. Tell us where we're at and what we're doing. Share stuff out from the people that you're interested in and want to connect with. How do you build following? You build a network of people. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, next. Okay, so I wanted to ask about, um, so I know you would, of course, post regular posts to try to build your audience. Is there a recommended, like, so many posts per day, like, so many posts per week? Just what would be the recommendation for someone trying to build a following? I think consistency is the baseline. Don't disappear for weeks. So I try to make sure that I post something every day in all of my groups. And and sometimes, depending on what I've set up, um, maybe a couple of some things. Um, I've heard all kinds of of rules on how many per hour, how many per day on things like Twitter and TikTok. I think that changes all the time. It does seem like Twitter and TikTok have a more voracious appetite for frequent posts than say Instagram or Facebook. Um, Some places if you post too fast too much they'll start throttling you. Um, But be out there consistently if not every day then every couple of days at least several times a week because if it's dead air people go away and they don't come back. And uh, be consistent but um, also be genuine. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to loathe the word authentic. <laughs> authentically you loathe it? I, I authentically loathe the word authentic. Um, but be genuine. Be you. Share who you are because that, if you're being true to yourself and you're being true to the audience, you're going to connect with people you want to connect with. One thing we didn't talk about much in this is having goals for your social media and having campaigns. And yes, consistency, absolutely agree. But have a plan for what you're trying to get out of these. Are you trying to drive them to buy? Is this post just to generate more engagement? Are you trying to get them into this platform? Have a goal for what you're doing. Make it a campaign and figure out what consistency fits that goal you're trying to achieve. If I'm trying to get people to dream hack at uh, December 15th to 17th, where we're going to be hosting the Southern Interactive Entertainment and Game Expo at the Georgia World Congress Center, at one sorry i'm behind on you guys uh then i'm gonna start i'm gonna build it slow start getting the word buzzing get people interested in seeing what happens so not i'm not posting it every day they're following to see what's my next announcement with gmac i've announced the college fair i've announced that speaker applications are open i've just announced that the indie studio area is open for applications (laughs) so bit by bit i'm building getting them to want to come back here and i know the results i want from this and trying to fit that with my consistency And actually, let me add one other clarification. Yes, the goals are important. Why am I doing this? Actually, I think the more important word is intention. Act with intention with what you do while you're building your brand. So in other words, me, I'm a bit of a jackass. And I'm kind of all over the place. Actually, I'm... But it's one of those things of I'm who I am. If, you know, and, and come see what we do. I try to enjoy life. I try to have fun with stuff. I try to show what I'm doing, what we're what we're going through and building. But I'm still acting intent with intention about what I do share and what I don't share about what I'm doing with my life, what I'm doing, you know, because there's the part of here's the stuff that's personal and family. I don't have a personal life, but here's the personal <laughs> stuff that's personal and family. And then here's all the other stuff going on that people might care about. But, yeah, dog pictures still go up. 
Yeah, but like I, I just posted this morning, I'm absolutely gutted that Jimmy Buffett died. Yeah, I just... Um, I, I had his music on the whole way through lockdown, and I swear it let me kept, keep whatever shards of sanity I still have. And so I am just absolutely gutted that he passed. I posted about that because that's important to me in my life. And um, I don't think I ever told my folks that I was I had Radio Margaritaville on 24 7 before this but uh, thank God for Jimmy so it's those kind of things where you can you can give a little part of your inner self to people and um, that goes a long way in making connections thank you for a great question next um, earlier you said something about how the landscape is turned to pay for play when it comes to broadcasting mm -hmm. your channels wherever it is how long do you think you should actually build up just having content before you start paying to play or is it from the very beginning like you only have five posts you should do um so here's one of the things i'm going to say is before you start doing pay for play make sure you're doing something you're going to continue to do right um, because if you if you go onto platform X and you start putting in time, and you're just like, this is a time suck. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Don't boost it. Don't pay for it. Don't do anything. Build content. And uh, this is one of those things, again, when you're building something, if it is a product demo, if it's talking about the book, if it is, oh, I'm out here gaming, if it's, I'm talking about, I have just invented the new widget that will do X, Y, and Z. What's important is talking about what's important, but your first number of posts, your first five, your first 10, your first 20, whatever it is, you're figuring out what you're doing. You're trying to figure out that identity. Play with it. Try to see what resonates. And then when you see traction, that's ones you look at. And I agree about don't boost because boosting is and I kind of was half joking, not even quite half joking, but I mean, when we watch the algorithms, it, it does seem to be one of these things of, oh, boost the post, I'm seeing traction. <laughs> there are occasions that it can be worthwhile to do that, but not often because it's the, this is a very targeted piece I wanna run to make something happen. Um, but know your platform as well, and depending on the platform determines, and with the kind of content you're you're, you're, you're running will kind of determine when you want to actually start that lift. But I would not start really doing the boosting until you've got your feet under you, you're comfortable with what you're doing and, and kind of enjoying it, or you've got somebody doing it for you so it looks like you enjoy it and care about it um, before you start spending the money. And this is what I hear from streamers, is you want to have that library of content on your YouTube channel. You want to have enough VODs up there that if somebody likes what you do and goes to see if there's more of it, there's enough there that they will want to go ahead and hit that subscription uh, button. Uh, and at that point, you need to have your consistency down. You need to have that habit and rhythm going. So it, it kind of adds to each other. Well, and the other thing on content, because there are still only 24 hours in a day, and you've got to sleep for at least a few of them every couple of days. Um, always look for how you can cross post and, and reuse content. So if you create a video for Twitter, then make sure you use that Twitter, that video, not with the Twitter mark, uh, water tag, watermark, but uh, the same video you can post on Instagram and YouTube Shorts and Facebook Reels. If you if you're a writer, you've got all of your book content to draw excerpts from, and use those excerpts. Either they can be paragraphs, they can be 500 words, they can be a chapter, they can be a freebie to help build your newsletter. Look at the stuff you've already created and see where you can use it multiple, multiple times. And now you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. It saves you a lot of time. Thanks for a great question. Thank you. Probably our last question here. Yeah. I'm so short. <laughs> you can take it out and hold it. <laughs> um, first, I'm really happy to hear that pets are really great because I have my, my late dog and my logo in memory of her. So. That makes me feel good. Um, but anyways, I'm an entrepreneur in the service industry. My target market is in the 46 to 60 year old range. And that really, I think, is only Facebook from my understanding. None of the other group, social media groups are in that age range. I want to be, uh, what I'm going to want to do is, is video that's like informational video. That would be a lot of what my social media would be. So I was wondering what would be like a second 
the social media group that you would recommend? And, and let me just give the panel this instruction. Give your answer, and then please tell us where we can find you online and where we can mm -hmm. find you here, because we are out of time. Um, so with the service industry stuff, and depending on what you're doing, um, and with video and instructional video, um, IGN TikTok. IG? Uh, Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, do Instagram Reels. And I would actually also suggest doing... Um, use the reels in the video also on YouTube Shorts or YouTube. Build all three repositories. Shoot it once. Put it on all three platforms. Um, so if you're doing video, you're doing informational stuff, build the repository of information because it's not only about today. It's about building stuff over years. Um, I've got a little bit of swag up here. Um, I'll be here most of the day except for a signing over in the um, dealer's hall about 2.30 to 4.30. Um, you can find me at jamespnettles.com. I'll link you to most everything else. Um, I do have a couple of copies of the Business um, for Writers book with me. This is second edition that just came out. Um, and Glennis over at the Missing Volume also has some of the dealer hall, and I'll have some with me over there as well. I'm pretty easy to find at galesymartin.com, morganbrice.com. If you spell them right, you'll find me on all the social media. I have swag up here. I also have a... Um, I mean, our link to the Square Store that has all of our books for sale where you can order them and get them personalized and shipped to you. Glynis also has a limited selection of our books over at uh, the Missing Volume. And um, I'm still on a whole lot of, pan of uh, programming for the rest of the con, so look me up on the schedule and uh, come see me. Uh, so 46 to 56 is a core gamer age, male or female. Zynga always was saying women 30 to 50 was the hardcore gamers based on how much of their time they spent gaming, how much of their social involvement was spent on gaming, and how much of their entertainment dollar went to gaming. So these folks have now been in social media for 20 plus years, MySpace, some of us with LiveJournal and other stuff before that. So they're not new to this. Uh, so I don't know what your exact target market is, but these folks are have been in the social media land landscape since it started and they're all over the place for it and they watch a lot of YouTube so if you're getting videos and getting the VODs going yeah I see that's nodding put it up there get your channel going oh and uh, Andrew Greenberg I have my websites hdiandrew.com the Georgia Game Developers Association is ggda.org and we are all over the place and make sure just you know tag us let everybody know what you thought of the panel and, you know, always feel free to tag us and hit us up and say, hey, I got a question. Please rate your panel on the Dragon.